Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Hey, good. Okay, so maybe you can start now. By the way, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Because I cannot see myself in another device. <laughs> okay, let's continue with this uh, renewable energy. So, um, I think we stop around here. So, uh, just a little bit refresh. So, Renewable energy referred to the energy that can be replenished on the human time scale. Okay, this is very important. Huh? Human time scale, which is around maybe hundred years. And then we also study about um, we do this because um, we want uh, sustainable energy. Okay, and then we have this question. Feel stuff. Okay, then we should be here. Okay, so this is the cost of a renewable energy. This is of course compared with the um, cost of the fossil fuels. So if you look from here, this is the correct estimated average cost, estimated uh, average cost uh, for new electric generation technology in year 2017. Because I cannot get the uh, latest one, uh, this should be the latest already. It should be not much different. So in this um, figure, they divide into a few different types of the cost, which is, you can see, transmission, investment, which is uh, how you transmit the energy from the power plant to the maybe electrical station. Okay. And then uh, we have the variable o &M. We have the fixed o &M. Variable o &M mostly refer to fuels. Like, and then fixed o &M is Okay, uh, variable O and M is mean that um, when you run the power plant, you need to pay for the O and M. But if you don't run it normally, you don't need to pay. So it's the directly proportional to the power output of the plant. And this fixed O and M is mean that it's a something like a routine maintenance. So even you run your power plant at a minimum power, you still need to pay for this uh, fixed O and M. Okay, and then we have the average capital cost. Capital cost refer to when you build the power plant, how much you need to pay. Okay, rest means just average. Huh? Okay, so we start from uh, this uh, a lot here. Okay, maybe we start from the first one. Okay, we look on this. Which one is the uh, most expensive? We look on the overall one. This is the wind offshore. It means that wind power plant is very expensive if you build it offshore, you build it on the sea. Because the foundation, the service, the transmission line, all very expensive. You see, especially the uh, light blue cost, which is a fixed OEM, you need to. The foundation is not static, and then uh, the salt water is very close. So the operational and maintenance cost is very expensive. Okay, so I think it will be the most expensive renewable energy. Right? So the most expensive energy. Right now, you have to hear. Okay? And then, second one is followed by the solar thermal. Solar thermal is where it's a old technology where they use the heat from the solar to boil the water and run the steam turbine. It's also very expensive. Okay? But nowadays, we do not have any newly developed solar thermal power plant. All is about maybe 1995 or 1990, about uh, 30 years ago. Now we don't have a new power plant about this technology anymore. Okay, because it's expensive. And then you can see that solar photovoltaics is maybe um, just 60% of the cost compared to solar thermal. 
previously photo test and mask expensive than Solarthema. That's why I really, uh, all the company, they go for Solarthema. But now, everyone will go for solar photo test. You can see, um, they're variable overnight. Okay, same like I think all the renewable energy do not have much variable overnight. They have only fixed overnight. Okay. And then you look on the first one. The coal. We're using the fossil fuels. Coal, we have three different types. Conventional coal, advanced coal, and advanced coal with the CCS. So we start from the conventional coal. Conventional coal is easy mean that you burn the coal, produce heat, and run a steam turbine. Okay, very direct forward. And then advanced coal is more advanced, which is more environmental friendly, whereby it convert coal into the gas. We call coal gasification. How they do it? They burn the coal in the furnace with the insufficient of oxygen. So when you do not have enough oxygen, you do not able to produce a complete combustion. Okay, remember that when, whenever you have a complete combustion, the end product will be the water, H2O, and also the uh, carbon dioxide, CO2, which is useless. Okay, that's why we need to burn it at the insufficient oxygen or no oxygen at all. So you're able to reduce carbon and carbon monoxide. Okay, so that this is still uh, able, flammable, so it can be used as a fuse. So whenever you convert the coal into gas, you try to make it that now you have the fuse in terms of gas. And you want to mix the fuse with the air, which is oxygen. So the mixture will be much better. You can see that gas and gas, you want to mix it very easy. So that in that case, your combustion will be more efficient. It will be complete. complete. You have a complete combustion. So that uh, the environmental effect will be lesser because the gases that you release to the environment is mostly only carbon dioxide and water. There's no more other uh, toxic gas like carbon monoxide. You fully burn it, complete combustion. Okay. Normally, when you look on your car, okay, normally old car, you can see that from the exhaust, gas is actually very black in color. Why is very dark? This is because there's a lot of carbon still haven't completely burned. So when you have the fuse which has not completely burned, then it will become very black. Okay. Of course, uh, white smoke is normally just refer to the 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 fuse is black. Okay, but black smoke normally it just refer to the uh, the combustion is not complete. Okay, so this advanced coal, which is gasification of the coal, it will make the combustion complete and it will be more um, effective and more environmental friendly. But it will be slightly expensive, like the process, the technology will be more expensive. Okay, so we have the conventional coal and advanced coal. Okay, and then next one is the advanced coal with the CCS. CCS here stands for carbon capture and storage. So carbon here is not really carbon, it's actually carbon dioxide. Okay, because after the complete combustion, we will not have any carbon. It just left carbon dioxide. And this is the final product. Whatever combustion, we have the carbon dioxide. And in this case, they will capture and store the carbon dioxide that released to the environment. It won't release to the environment, but it capture and maybe uh, compress it and then uh, bury it under the sea, under the seabed or under the ground. So they won't release to the environment. So there's no greenhouse gas. That's why they have an extra cost of it. Okay, so this one is called carbon capture and storage. But I don't think we have any in Malaysia because the cost is too expensive. And then um, Malaysian citizens do not have that awareness to pay for the higher electric bill. I told you that my system has a carbon storage system and ask you to pay for more, I don't think you will pay for it. Uh, but some of the country, like the other country, Euro country, yes, they think that, yes, it's good for environment, so I will pay extra 20% for the cost. Okay? This is all about awareness. Huh? And then we look on the conventional combined cycle. Okay, you can see that this, all this with the stuff is actually natural gas technology. The first three is the coal, use coal as a fuse. And then the next part is use gas. These are the two main uh, fossil fuels used for power generation. Okay, remember we don't use oil so much because oil is expensive. Okay, normally we use on the moving vehicle. Wood. Okay, so again you have con conventional con cycle, 
uh, at once combined cycle. You can see that combined cycle is slightly cheaper than the uh, 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 conventional combustion turbine. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about combustion turbine first. Combustion turbine is just, I burn the natural gas to run the steam turbine. The natural gas is uh, very hot now. Okay, so you boil the water, and when the water boils, you will create the steam. And the steam has a pressure to run the, run the turbine. So we call it either conventional combined turbine. And we also have the advanced, which is more effective or efficient. And this one, combined cycle, refer to in one combustion, you're able to run two turbines. What does this mean? Try to imagine that first, you burn the natural gas. Okay? So when you burn the natural gas, you're able to create pressure and temperature. Sorry, you create the thermal and you create the pressure. So the heat that you create from these, you are used to boil the steam turbine. Sorry, we use to burn the steam, burn the water, boil the water and create the steam to run the steam turbine. So this is the first uh, cycle. You run the steam turbine. Secondly, the natural gas itself, what happens when you burn it? It will explode and it will expand. So that expansion force also able to run the turbine. Okay? So you have two turbines to run. One is run by the expansion of the natural gas. One is run by the expansion of the steam, which is a boil by the heat produced by the natural gas. Okay? So this combined cycle only applicable for gases fuel, but not applicable for solid fuel. We are not able to do the expansion using the uh, uh, solid fuel. The, the expansion is not uh, good enough, not powerful enough to run the turbine. Okay, so when you see there's a combined cycle, most of the case there is definitely gas technology. They use many different types of the natural gas. Okay, and then it will be very cheap because you use the power, the thermal, and also the pressure from the combustion. So it will be more effective. Like our our vehicle, we use the only the combustion, which is to create the pressure, but we don't care about the heat. We just throw away the heat because we don't have the steam turbine in the in the car. Okay, so we use only the pressure. We don't use the heat. But for this combustion cycle, we use both. So make it very effective, and the cost is the lowest. I think the lowest compared to other type of the renewable energy. Okay, and the mostly uh the cost come from the fuel slot, the natural gas, and operational and maintenance also regime. And again, this is the natural gas. So gas you want to mix with the oxygen, you have a very complete combustion. So again, you have the high efficiency. Okay, so this is the gas, and then you have the nuclear, nuclear power plant. Okay, the cost is not cheap, but it's actually still a lot of spaces. Okay, and then we have geothermal biomass. Geothermal is quite cheap, huh? you see. Geothermal wind is quite cheap. If you build on on soil, if you build wind turbine, you build on the soil, it's not expensive. But if you build on off soil, then it will be expensive. Okay. And then biomass. And then we have the hydroelectric. Okay. Uh, hydroelectric seems like it's the lowest among all types of renewable energy. Okay. This is just a general guideline. Don't say that hydro definitely will be cheaper than biomass. Not that. Case, huh? This is just a reference in average. But many, many cases, hydroelectrical power can be more expensive than any of them. Or maybe uh, you can see that uh, a wind is very cheap here, but you try to build one wind turbine in Malaysia, see how much it cost. It will be very expensive just because we do not have much strong wind. Okay, because the cost count here is a uh, cost, uh, you see? Uh, USD per megawatt hour. So it refers to the power output, not refer to the power plant. Okay. So if you have the less output, then your cost will be very expensive per kilowatt, sorry, per megawatt hour of output. Okay. So this is just an average value. Don't think too much. Okay. Just a, a guideline. Huh? And according to the uh, state of Malaysia, Malaysia uh, sustainable. Authority like they state that uh, nowadays in Malaysia, solar photo that's even can be comparable with this uh, combined cycle power. The cost can be cheap already because they give the incentive, they give the tax exemption, and so on and so forth. So make it uh, comparable with the fossil fuels power. Okay, but this is a different country have different policy. 
have the different target, so make it um, they slightly different. Uh. Okay, this is just average. Uh. Okay, then we move to the next one. Capacity factor. Okay, when we talk about the renewable energy, there is a one main weakness of renewable energy is a capacity factor. Okay, so what's mean by capacity factor over here? Capacity factor is mean that um, how much capacity you really use on the power bar. Factor of capacity, how many percent? Okay, let's say if I have the capacity of 100% of capacity factor of 1, it means that the power plant is run at the full power at the default hour a day, 365 days a year. Keep running at the full power hour. Okay, but this is mostly impossible because you need service, you need routine maintenance, you need to close it for maintenance or what, for fossil fuels. Uh, you see for nuclear. nuclear Nuclear power plant, we have the capacity factor uh, more than 90%. Just 10% uh, of time, maybe uh, the uranium is uh, uh, not able to produce the maximum power, but it's still able to use maybe just 80%, or maybe they have to stop for a small maintenance. So this nuclear power plant is the highest, have the highest capacity factor. Okay? And then it, you see uh, natural gas and coal is around 50 plus, only less than 60. Okay, because uh, the maintenance needed for the combustion power plant is normally much higher. You need to create the furnace, you need to create the turbine, maintain the turbine. Okay, but nuclear not so much. Okay, and then you have the hydropower. Hydropower here, uh, the capacity factor is around 30 something, 35 or 60, 40. But this is not because of the maintenance. Because of you do not have so much water. Try to imagine if you have the dam which equipped with the six turbine, six hydro turbine. Do you think you're able to run the six turbine at the maximum output all the time? No, definitely not impossible. If you run at maximum output all the time, I think a few days later, then uh, there's no more water in your dam. Okay, so you need to consider how much the rain drop and then how many hours you can run the power plant at full speed. Okay, so this is of course uh, the capacity factor is uh, uh, independent for one to one power plant. Maybe in this location the, the rainfall is higher, so of course the hydropower capacity factor will be higher. Okay, and then we also the same thing. First, you need to start for maintenance, a little bit later. Secondly, do you have the maximum wind speed all the time? No. Maybe your wind design, sorry, your wind turbine design is actually targeted at 10 meters per second of wind speed. But maybe uh, today they have 10 meters per second for two hours, and then 8 meters per second of wind speed for three hours, and then 6 meters per second of wind speed for two hours. So it will, make it, it will meet the maximum capacity at all the time. Okay, even sometimes they do not have wind at all. Okay, so to make the wind power plant have the capacity lower and solar photovoltaic is the worst because the maximum you can get in Malaysia is 12 hours. You have 24 hours of a 24 hour a day, but maximum you have sunlight is 12 hours. And in this 12 hour, half of it you just get half of the capacity. In the morning it's not too hot and you don't have much solar already. And even you also have to do not have much solar already. Only the solar noon, maybe 11 to 2 pm, then you have the maximum value. Okay, so you can see that uh, the effect only less than 30%. Okay, solar thermal even worse because solar thermal you need to boil the water. So the quality of the solar energy input to the system must be better. Solar photo water in the early in the morning and late in the evening, as long as you can see something this little bit light, you're able to generate power. Of course, it's very low output, but at least you can generate a little bit. Even the moonlight able to generate power for solar photovoltaic, but again, very less. Okay, but this solar thermal not as long as you're not able to boil the water, you are not able to generate steam to run the steam turbine. Okay, so the quality of sunlight needed for solar thermal is much higher. That's why huh, the capacity factor is even lower. Okay. So you see that this uh, 
uh, general definition of capacity factor over here is the actual energy generated in the megawatt hours mean that the real one, the real power generated in one year or maybe one day, divided by capacity times the time. Okay, this capacity times the time means that maximum, let's say I have the power plant of 10 megawatt, so assume that you run at full capacity all the day, then this should be my maximum value. Okay, so actual divided by the idea, something like this, like capacity factor. So you can see that solar photovoltaics, this means that maybe around 20, 20, we consider as 20%. Huh? So it's been that, let's say I have the power plant of 10 megawatt. Okay, you see uh, the title very nice. I have the power plant of 10 megawatt. But actually, the average power output is only 2 megawatt because the capacity factor is only 20. Okay, so only 20% of the capacity. Okay, yeah? so when you do your assignment, remember to consider the capacity factor. Okay. It's very important parameter, uh, especially for renewable energy, because it's definitely a very uh, weakness, mm. a very uh, clear weakness for the renewable energy. Okay, then after we talk about capacity factor, talk about the quality of energy. What does it mean by quality? Okay, so not all energy are equal. Application function, portability between function, concept of ecstasy. So this quality of energy actually is the other one we call it as the exergy. Okay, so give here I give you two scenarios here. We have the system A and system B, both are water. So if I want to calculate the total energy in the water, the only you have, let's say the water is a stationary light, you do not have the potential energy. So the only thing you have in the water, the only energy you have in the water is the thermal energy, heat energy. Okay, so in order to calculate heat energy, we have a general equation for this. Q equal to mc heat. Q is a total thermal energy, m is a total mass of the water, c is a specific heat capacity of the water. Specific heat capacity of water refer to uh, how many, or maybe I can explain this. Let's say the heat capacity of water is 4.2 kJ per kg of Kelvin. In other words, I need to supply 2.2. 4.2 kJ of energy to increase the temperature of water by 1 Kelvin. Okay, so this is the meaning, right? I need 4.2 kJ to increase the 1 kg of water by 1 degree Celsius. Okay, so it's 4.2. This is called specific heat capacity. So it's the heat capacity is larger than you need more energy to heat up the water. Okay. So the T is the temperature in Kelvin. So when the temperature drops to zero Kelvin, there's no energy at all, which is negative 273 degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's say system A, uh, there is a very huge mass, but slightly lower in temperature. So the total energy is 100 megajoule, and the pressure is the same line. Okay, and system B, there is a slightly lower in terms of mass, but slightly higher in terms of temperature then the total energy also 100 megajoule. So which one have more um, quality? Which energy have the higher quality? Ah, maybe I can take that abundance. Okay. I will create a post over here. Which system? has the higher quality. Just A and B line. Okay, A is referred to the, uh, we can refer to this line. System A or system B, which one has the highest or higher quality of energy? Both the total energy are exactly the same, huh? it's 100 mega. That's why we need to start the energy because the quality is different. But now, let me give you a brief idea which shall have the better quality. Mm. A and B, mm. which 
decision correct. Don't follow the majority, eh? maybe the majority is not correct. Uh, <laughs> Uh, almost equal 23 work for A and 30 work for B. Okay. Uh, maybe I give you a scenario. What's mean by quality? Quality is mean that uh, they have the better effectiveness or efficiency to convert to other type of energy, or there is a better uh, efficiency when you want to use it. Okay, so maybe I give you an example. Uh, we have money. Let's say I have hundred ringgit of cash, and I have a uh, hundred ringgit of product. Maybe I have a whatever product worth hundred ringgit. Okay, so supposedly the the value is exactly the same. One is a hundred ringgit of cash. One is a one hundred ringgit of product. The product would hundred ringgit, right? So in this case, which one is more quality? Refer to which one is easier to convert to other other things. Let's say I have hundred ringgit cash. You want to buy food? You want to buy back throw? You want to buy whatever? You can just convert. Yes, cash is king. Yes, this is okay because cash is easy to convert to other type of things. But how about the product? Are you able to convert to other type of, let's say I have uh, 100 ringgit of shampoo. Uh, shampoo lah, I don't know what product you sell, maybe you just sell shampoo, you have 100 ringgit of shampoo. Yes, the value is equivalent to 100 ringgit of cash, but the quality is not the same because you are not able to convert to other type of things easily. I want to use the shampoo, change for food, uh, maybe the shop will do not want to accept it. Okay, but cash, everyone will accept it. Okay, so it means that cash has the much higher quality than shampoo, although the value is exactly the same. Okay, because it's easier to convert to other type of energy, other type of mm, material or product. But now we go back to this system A and B. So A, you can see that uh, we look on the temperature and mass only. The only thing different between A and B is the temperature and mass. Okay, so let's say about mass. Will it affect anything on this? If there is a potential energy, then we look on the mass. Okay, let's say this is have the height of the 100 meter, then mass will really matter because the mass will create the potential energy for you. Remember that the energy for potential energy is mgh, mass and gravitational force and height. Okay, but in this case, the only thing different is the temperature. They do not have potential energy. They do not have kinetic energy. Because not stated, unless stated, say that uh, this is the height of 100 meter or what. But now they don't say anything. So it gives you the temperature different. So the higher temperature should have the higher quality. Okay? Why? Because when you reach the higher degree Celsius of water, the water will become steep. So you can convert to kinetic energy. Okay? And then you can get electricity or what. But how about this 60 degrees Celsius? Are you able to do anything on 60 degrees Celsius of water? It's not boiled. You are not able to create the steam. It just evaporates faster. Okay, so nothing you can do with this. Maybe it's just able to heat up the environment. But you are not able to, yeah, slow cooking. I, I wonder if it can fully cook your, your, your meal or not. <laughs> 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, maybe for souring, maybe. Okay. But the usage is very limited. But 100 degrees Celsius, you want to for cooking, no problem. You want for souring, no problem. You want to generate electricity, no problem. So it means that B is more, have more quality. Yeah, because this has the easier way or more effective or more efficient to convert to other type of energy. And this defines the quality of energy. But of course, uh, this must be case to case basic. 
you want to look on the different different criteria. As I said, you look on mesh where you have the height, which you're able to generate the potential energy. But if not, then you look on temperature. Okay, this means quality lah. Okay, now in terms of energy, electrical energy is a high quality energy. I can say it's the highest. Nothing is better than electricity because it is easily convertible to kinetic energy via the model, heat energy via the heat, heating coil or heat pump. So I can convert to anything that I need. You can see that all the devices in your house they use, they powered by electrical energy. Not because you get electrical supply, but you do not have heat supply. Just because electricity is very high efficient to convert to other form of energy. Very high efficient and very easy. Okay, so electrical is very high quality of energy. And if we talk about we talk about electrical, we talk about heat. High temperature energy is higher quality than low temperature energy. This uh, we consider the energy because high temperature will be easier to convert to other form of energy. Okay, hope you understand the concept. Ah, just a quality, mm, not hundred joule equal to hundred joule. Now we have to case by case basis because quality is different. The amount is the same, but the quality is different. Okay, then we go back to the renewable energy. This is about the trend, global trend for renewable energy. Which country have the target? Which country have the policy? So we look on maybe start from Malaysia. Now Malaysia is quite small over here. So Malaysia have the target and policy. Okay, normally uh only a very uh, not developed country or very poor country, they do not have the target policy because they not even have enough food. Why care about renewable energy? Okay, then the developed country like Europe, I uh, can see Europe, all of them have the policy and target. Uh, North America also the same. Okay, it means that they care about the environment. Okay, you see Africa, Africa is over here. Okay, middle. You can see that there is no target, no policy. So you have no food, but quite care about the environment, correct? Okay. But you can see that most of the country already have the target and policy like. So it seems like we are going moving to the correct path. Okay. Then we talk about Malaysia lah, because you know, we are not in Malaysia, so we talk about what policy we have, what target we have. So these are the national renewable energy policy. Then the objective here is to increase the renewable energy contribution in the national power generation mix. Now currently we are mostly depends on the fossil fuels and hydropower. So we try to more increase the contribution for other type of renewable energy. And then secondly, to facilitate the growth of the renewable energy industry. They will help, they will plan for that. Okay. To ensure the reasonable renew and renewable energy generation cost. We want to lower down the cost so that compatible with the uh, for, for sure fuels. To conserve the environment for future generation, uh, in general, of course, why we use renewable energy? To conserve the environment. And to enhance the awareness on the role of and importance of renewable energy. Okay, awareness in Malaysia about renewable energy, frankly speaking, is very big. Yes, you, you may aware of it, you may know it, but you, you won't say sacrifice for it. Okay, let's say uh, here uh, one day PMB sell two types of the energy for you. One is a non-renewable energy at 30 cent and one is a renewable energy at 50 cent. Then you know how many of you willing to go for the renewable energy which is slightly expensive? I think 90% of Malaysians will not choose to get renewable energy, which is slightly expensive. We will look on our own uh, advantage of it. I want to choose the cheapest one now. What I get is actually the same. Why I care about what it actually uh, happened behind, right? Whether it's generated by renewable energy or generated by non-renewable energy, okay? So that this one, uh, we are not able to do that. Maybe some of you say, oh, I don't have enough money. I want to save money for other purposes. So you work actually different. They are very rich, so they can do this, do that. We cannot. We are already tight budget, so we have to choose the cheapest one. 
Okay, fine. So this, I think government also know this thing. We will not pay for more. We will not pay extra for renewable energy. So they want to lower down the cost for renewable energy so that it's comparable with the fossil fuels. Uh, then different story already. Because most of us know that renewable energy is good for environment. If the cost is the same, then I think most of us will choose renewable energy. Okay, so this is the role of the government to bring us to the renewable energy, which bring down the cost lah. In other words, okay, or maybe another method is force you to buy. Okay, maybe you buy the renewable energy tax free. If you buy the non-renewable energy, then uh, I tax you cow cow. Uh, then wait, and now wait. You buy the non-renewable energy will be more expensive. You have to pay for the environment. Uh, then okay, fine. You choose one. So either they reduce the cost or they force you to buy the renewable energy. Two methods only we can do. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the Malaysia renewable energy RE policy target. Uh, we what we, we target is actually achieving twenty percent of renewable energy capacity mix by twenty twenty five. Uh, four years from now, but this target was set in year. Can't remember which year, but previously it's by 2030, but now already 2021, we still not achieve it. So we extend another five years, maybe due to COVID. I don't know. <laughs> okay, but we are moving us uh, quite slow. Lah. We, we are not able to achieve the target in year 2020. Even the our vision to become a developed country in year 2020, high income nation in 2020, it also not able to achieve it. Same thing for this. Uh, 20% of the renewable energy also not able to achieve. So we we'll extend for another five years. Hopefully we can achieve it together. Okay. So how the government uh, push to achieve the target and policy? So you can see that first one, implementing enhanced net energy metering and solar leasing. So they come up with a um, system, net energy metering. So net energy metering is a uh, meaning that you build the solar energy power plant maybe on the rooftop and then sell to the DMB. Okay, so you can offset your DMB bill. Okay, so they call net energy metering and solar leasing. Solar leasing is even better. This is something like you don't need to pay anything. You just need to rent out your rooftop. Maybe you have a bungalow. Then you have a lot of area can build a solar power plant. And then you, you contribute the area the company will contribute the solar panel. Okay, you don't need to pay any cent. You contribute to area, they contribute the solar panel, and once you get the profit, then you share the profit between you and the company. Okay, so zero capex, zero investment of, and then your rooftop, you also not use it for anything but, correct? Why don't you use it to put the power plant over there? And government also do something on this. Um, they give the tax assumption to this company giving the solar leasing, which gives you the zero capex. Okay, so hopefully they can uh, promote the usage of solar energy. But this normally is uh, referred to solar energy only. Right? Okay. But of course, uh, uh, they always have the term and condition because let's say your, your house is very small, this terrace house, let's say. Okay, so the area that you can build the solar panel is very less. So including the cost for commissioning line, okay? The, the maintenance cost, labor cost, small project normally uh, they won't want, they don't want to do, they don't want to take up, okay, because they cannot get any profit from that. But if you have a big bungalow or you have the institution like mm, our UC, then possible they will consider it, okay, because when the area is big, the commissioning also do one time only, okay, the cost also everything can be cheaper when the project is very huge, okay, so actually it's a win win. We actually already uh, look into this. I will use it up and look into it, but not in KL. In um, there's a word which branch, uh, um, Johor branch. Okay, we review it in the Johor branch. So we list out our rooftop for the CIC building and let the company to build the solar power plant. Okay, and then we share the profit. Of course, we have to sign a contract for 10 years or 20 years. Lah. Okay. And then next one is the implementing large scale solar program. LSS. This is mostly for commercial. Maybe the solar company wants to invest in this, then they can take out this. Again, they give incentive or tax exemption like this. 
Next, implementing non-solar renewable energy project. We don't always focus on solar, but we always focus on others, such as the biomass. Okay. I think other than solar, the second uh second uh potential renewable energy Malaysia should be biomass. With tighter out, being out, okay, uh geothermal possible a little bit. Okay. So the next will be biomass uh, because uh, we have a lot of waste, but it's a waste because we still have a lot of uh, oil pump plantation. So it's able to give you a lot of uh, biomass resources. Okay. Then next one, establishing a RE facilitation program in sustainable development. Yeah, yeah, uh, not, not missing actually. Uh, I add in the new slide because this target and policy is always renewing. They always come up with a new target, come up with a new policy, come up with a new project. So I have to update from time to time. Yeah, at the time I give you still not inside. Okay, don't worry about this. This is just an uh, instruction just to let you know. Uh, okay. Okay, so this uh, to achieve this, Malaysia need to invest a total of 33 million ringgit. And the rate speed of solar project at a cost of as low as 17.77 cents, which is cheaper than the gas generation price, which is 33, 23.22 cents. Of course, if we have a bit of tax exemption, so the cost is cheaper. Normally, the LSS3 is something like this. Uh, government say, I have the 10 megawatt project solar panel. I want to build at Johor, Sagama, let's say. Okay. So you build up, see what price you can give to the government. Okay. So the lowest you get is 17.77 cents. Okay. And that is the 45 reduction in just a few years. We can get cheaper and cheaper. First is because solar panel become cheaper and cheaper. Second, we have a lot of competitors now in Malaysia. A lot of companies do work on this solar project. So when we have the more competitor, there is no more um uh they call monopoly. Okay, when there's no monopoly, then the price will be cheaper because their margin will be much lesser. Okay. Uh, I think this one is the uh, old. Yeah, we want to reduce the, our emission of greenhouse gas by 40% in 2020, but now 2021 already. And I do not get any update from the internet yet. At Google, I cannot see whether we achieve this 40% in 2020 or not. Okay, and then we want to reduce our energy consumption by 7% in 2020. Also, same thing, I do not see any uh, result of that yet. Okay, this one is mean that we want to increase the energy efficient. Okay, this one is we want to reduce the greenhouse gas, it means that we want to switch to renewable energy. Okay. Okay, then we talk about the incentives that we have in Malaysia. So these are the tax incentives for green, green technology. In general, we have two types, which one called GITA and another one called GITE, which is a tax allowance and tax exemption. Okay, and uh, actually the same thing, like you pay less tax. Like, but exemption, tax exemption is more to use to reduce your total taxable income. Okay, and then the tax allowance mostly to reduce the specific amount of uh, tax taken out of your regular paycheck. Okay, but this is very technical terms for accounting. Uh. We are not very clear about this. Just keep in mind that you will get, you have to pay less tax if you work in this spring technology. Either it's a building or what. Okay, see that now. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah, this slide. Okay, so this uh, GITA tax allowance mostly on project. Okay, which uh, comprise of the renewable energy, energy efficient, green building, green data center, or integrated waste management activity. Okay, so whatever the project is for within this category, then you can, you can uh, apply for the tax allowance. And then this one's a service. Okay, whichever you fall in this uh, renewable energy, energy efficient, green building, uh, then uh, you will get the tax assumption. Okay, uh, I know that, I think you should aware that uh, our institution is going to build a student center in our existing football court. And that one is actually the green building. They will utilize the usage of the 
of the natural light, okay, and then minimize the air conditioning usage. So the airflow design all is very important. They want to maintain the comfort environment, but reduce the power usage, power consumption. That's why we call it green using. Okay, will be one of the trademarks after this. Okay, then we talk about the financial scheme that actually government help us, which is the green technology financial scheme 2.0, which is offered interest this two point two percent if you borrow from bank for your house loan, something four percent good. Okay, but now this one is only two percent, half of it. Okay, so they they actually um hope the investor will borrow the money and build the power plant. Okay, that's why uh, this is one of the methods to help the investor and the industry uh, to build up the to use the renewable energy. And now we talk about policy in Malaysia. We start from Malaysia start to have the policy in year 2005. Okay, and then this first policy in Malaysia we call it Surya 1000. Okay, it start from year 2005 to year 2010, and the effect uh, is not so good. Okay, the, because um, I would say that the policy is not too attractive. Okay, and then start from year 2011 until 2017, we start to have the fit in tariff. And this fit tariff is not only for solar, it's only for biomass. Okay, and small hydro. Small hydro is mean that hydro power plant which do not have the debt because small hydro. Okay, so this one is very successful because it's really very very attractive. Okay, but we stopped much earlier than twenty seventeen because the quota has been fully utilized. If we keep continuously uh, accumulate more project, then the government will back up. Okay, let's see how how it works. We start from this, okay. We start from this uh, Surya 1000, which is a subsidy, subsidy program subsidized on installation costs. So, at that year, 2005 to 2010, um, the cost of solar panels is still expensive. Okay, so government will subsidize you on the installation cost. So, you want to build on the rooftop or your house or your factory, then the government will subsidize on the installation cost. Okay, fully funded by government. Eh? And only for the capacity lower than 30 kilowatt peak. P behind is just a peak, like maximum value. Like peak. It's referred to the power capacity of your solar panel. You can see that some of them will put kilowatt peak, some of them will put kilowatt AC, alternate current. This is referred to when, when pass through the panel, inverter, and then it will become AC. Okay, depends on in which state you calculate the power output. But most of the case, you calculate just in front of the Solar panel. This is referred to the capacity of the solar panel. Okay, and one to one offset from monthly energy bill. They subsidize you on the installation cost, and then once you generate electricity from this uh, power plant or maybe farm solar farm, then you can sell back to PMB, which is one to one offset. Okay, sound good, but not attractive because solar panel is too expensive. Okay. And then second one is free in tariff. This is the investment program to sell energy at the premium tariff. You can see the premium tariff is mean that you can sell a very, very good price. This Surya 1000 is just one to one. You buy from DMB is a 30 cent. You sell to DMB also 30 cent. Okay, same price. But the installation cost is too expensive, which makes it not attractive. But this tariff, free tariff is very good. You buy from DMB is 30 to 40 cents. You sell that to DMB can be more than one ringgit, which you able to get extra 60 or 70 cents, not one to one offset, but you can sell at the premium tariff. Okay, but who able to pay for the fund? The, the price different, 40 cents and one ringgit, 60 cents different. Then the consumer will pay for it. The consumer of the non renewable energy will pay for it. So you can see that source of the fund, 1.6% contribution from electricity consumer. Any of us, whoever pay the interview, then you have to contribute to this fund. 
1.6. Let's say you, your electrical bill is 108, so you have to pay 160 cents for this renewable energy fund. Okay? As only for capacity of lower than 1,000 gigawatt peak. Okay, and then selling at the indirect rate depending on the size and bonus of qualification. And it also depends on how many funds they accumulate. Okay, let's say they accumulate 100 million. And then this one, they generate uh, more energy. So the energy price that you sell, they will be lesser. Divide by total energy. Total fund accumulate, divide by total energy. Then you will know how much price you get. Okay, then what's mean by this? bonus qualification here. Let's look on this next slide. Okay, not next slide. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's just like 1.6%. Uh, I think still in your, give me a minute. Right? Let's go here. Mm, I think no more. I think end last year, maybe. Okay, maybe you can refer to the electrical bill last year. You still have 1.6% of this. They call it KWTB. Okay, so we tax 6% and KWTB 1.6. Uh, this is the Naga, Bole, Baharura, KWTB, I don't know this one or what. <laughs> okay, so you have to pay for both uh, service tax and KWTB. But now I refer to my latest electrical bill, just service tax. I do not have KWTB anymore. So it's already end of story, yeah, this uh, thing, alright. But this one is actually very powerful uh, because it's very attractive. Okay. Okay, now we talk about ROI for fee tariff. You can see that how much, how fast is it? Payback period, six years and three months. And okay, maybe you don't have the idea on payback period, you look on the investment view. Yeah. Your location is Grand Valley and Zoho, your investment yield is 16.9%. You can tell me what kind of investment can give you this kind of view. You want to buy share, you want to put in effort, fix deficit, or you want to buy a mutual fund, or what? Okay, I don't think any of them can give you this yield. Okay, 16.9. And you can see that in Pignan, Kedah, Police, Plantan, you can even get up to 19%. Okay, why this area is higher? Why you build a power plant in Big Bang, you will get higher investment return. Mm -hmm. This is because Big Bang, Kedah, Police, Kelantan have the higher solar emitted. In other words, it will be hotter. Okay, if you are traveling from um, North Malaysia to South Malaysia, Johor to Perlis, then you can feel the difference. Okay, but it's much hotter than the uh, job. Okay, just because the location on the earth, lah, so make it have the higher solar energy. Okay, you can see that uh, this is a uh, rate are based on the estimate rate of uh, 0 0.911 ringgit per kilowatt hour. The price of profit in tariff in itself to DAB. Which is twenty percent decreation on the rate of twenty five fifteen. Um, this I think is a twenty nineteen. Okay, I mean four years. In the four years, the cost, sorry, the price can sell can be dropped by twenty percent. Okay. Okay. Then we look on the fin time break. You can see that. When I can look on this fee tariff rate, you can go to set up. Okay, uh, this is a page in set up. You just just set up Malaysia or set up in other. Okay, set up sustainable energy development authority. Okay, and then from here, you're able to check the fee tariff rate. Okay. Uh, okay, this one just because of the MCO I think. Okay, so here we can. Check for the all the information about the renewable energy quota target or whatever all about here. Okay, now we talk about this price. So you can see that the latest is uh, 2030. Okay, let's say you start from the beginning of um, 2015, first January. You can see that the price is very very attractive. 
uh, let's say you are household, you want to build on your mountain road, okay, which is less than 4 kilowatt, you can sell at the 91.66 cents. Okay, and then other bonus you have this thing. Use an installation in building or building structure plus 17 cents. Use as building material plus 16 cents. Use local as some local manufacturer or assembly solar banner plus 5 cents. Use local solar event in water plus 5 cents. So you try to imagine you plant this, plus this, plus this, plus all this. How much you can get? Okay, I think you'll get more than one ringgit and 30 cents. But you buy from TMB only 30 cents, 40 cents. Okay, so you earn a lot from here. But let's look on the recently latest January 2020. You can see only 54 cents. USD is 91 cents. It dropped by half already because uh, the capacity become larger and larger. But the fund we have is remain the same. So when we divide by the total amount, it will become lesser and less. Okay, this one government didn't pay for it, but the consumer pay for it. Okay. Okay, let's continue on this. It keeps dropping up. And not only for solar, it's only applicable for small hydro and uh, bypass. Ah, yeah, TMB tariff rate, 21.8 cent for the first 200 kilowatt. Okay, and as I said, this um, fit in tariff has moved to the end at the year 2020. Okay, we no more fit in tariff. So, uh, what we have now is net energy metering. And net energy metering also have to revise for a few times already. The net energy metering 1, net energy metering 2.0, and 3.0. Now, already come to 3.0. Okay? Uh, net, I just briefly explained to you what's mean by net energy metering. It means that one to one offset. No more premium rate, but one to one offset. So, you generate electricity, you can sell to the MB, and then you can offset your electrical bill. Okay? Maybe I. So YouTube, I think this one is from TMB. Okay, wait a minute. I think you cannot hear the sound. One minute now. Want to save your electricity bills? Then NEM is the right solution for you. Generate and consume your own electricity using solar panel on your rooftop via NEM program. Besides, any excess energy generated by your solar PV system can be offset on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Here are the options of solar PV purchasing modes that you can choose from. Once you have choose your preferred mode, the RPDI or RPDSP will apply for NEM on behalf of the customer. Look how much energy you can save by going solar. You can find out more information on NEM by visiting SEDA's website. Uh, this one still applicable, uh, so if you want to apply, you still can apply for it. Okay, but now uh, the, the term and condition is slightly different. Okay, so now we have the net energy meter. We start from net energy meter 2.0, uh, which is effective on 1st January 2019, which I thought the true net energy meter concept. Okay, previously this one is mean that not true. <laughs> okay, um, you buy from DMV one rate, you sell that to DMV this and another rate. Of course, they call it one to one offset, but in terms of energy offset, but not in terms of uh, cost or price offset. Okay, so they claim that not fair to the consumer. So they come to review it, become the true net energy metering concept. Where you buy from DMV 30 cents, you sell to DMV still 30 cents. If you buy it more expensive, you will sell more expensive. Okay, according to the tariff that I uh, showed here just now. Okay, if you are falling in this first tariff, then you follow this. If you follow here, then you have to follow the second one. 
but not as a previous one, maybe just set up the lowest. Okay, so you'll be more fair to the consumer using this uh, net energy meter is starting from 1st January 2019. Access solar and PV generated energy to be exported back to the grid on a one on one offset basic. So and every one kilowatt hour export to the grid will be offset against one kilowatt consumed from grid instead of either displaced cost previously. Okay, that's one previous cost is not um, not fair to the consumer. And the new energy meter scheme is only applicable to Peninsula and Malaysia. Uh, for those from Sabah, Sarawak, I know that you have very big house, but not applicable to apply for net energy metering. Okay, because the commissioning is very difficult. Because first, Sabah, Sarawak is not under TMB. Sarawak is under Sarawak Energy, which is not related to TMB at all. And then Sarawak is, sorry, Sarawak is under Sabah Electricity, which is a subsidiary of TMB. Still okay, but the process might be difficult, so they don't want to do it as well. So only applicable to finance collaboration. So now, uh, this is definitely a new slide, huh? because it's just quite new. So this net metering 3.0, the new one, just implemented this year, 2021. It's still fresh and you still apply for it. Okay, so what's the difference? Okay, this is a uh, urban from 2021 to 2023 with the code. And this is your So you can see that uh, start from 1st of February 2021 and you have 12 month credit rollover, one to one ratio. Okay. I think let's say how much left. Maybe we think about how much left. Uh, let's, let's check uh, how much left. I also don't know how much left. Be a search and then 3.0 quota. Yeah, yeah, see one quota balance. Maybe you can check this. Yeah, this one very nice. Okay, so you can see that um, it divides into three categories Raya, a government, and commercial. And we look on commercial, it starts from 1st February. Total apply. It gives quota 300 megawatt. Now already 270 um, megawatt taken. So we just left a little bit. Okay. So we just uh, balance only a few percent. Okay. Just left 3.86 megawatt. So I think this 3.86 will not be fully utilized because the amount is too less. We want to build a power plant just 3.86 megawatt. It will be too small for an industry player. Okay. So this one uh, for those who are working in the solar industry, sorry, it's already out of stock. Then this are is government. Okay. Government, I still have a lot. You see a quota balance still, uh, I think still have more than 80% left. Sorry, have still have 85% left. They, they give the quota 100 megawatt, only 15 megawatt is taken. Okay, so still have 85 megawatt. And this is what we want to look on it. Raya. Mm -hmm. uh, now level Raya is very uh, poor. You can see that balance is still 88 megawatt. It's not too attractive, maybe. Okay, because one to one offset. Okay, but if you have a very big rooftop and then you can find a solar leasing company with zero capex, I think you can try. It's good for your bill and you don't need to pay anything, but you will share the profit. Okay, and you have two layer of rooftop. Maybe uh, your indoor will be slightly cooler compared to one layer of rooftop. Okay, now you have one layer of solar panel and one layer of the original rooftop. So supposedly will be better in terms of the heat uh, retention. Okay, so this is the net energy metering three point oh. The different thing is just they divide into. Um, three different uh, category lah. Okay. 
Okay, let's go. Let's continue. Okay, other than net energy metering, we still have uh, one called self consumption or soft form they call self co. This one does not have quota. So, whichever you want to install, then you can just install it. But this one actually is uh, no one will give you any incentive on this. Why? Because you can see you generate the solar panel, sorry, you build the solar power plant, you generate power for your own use only. The extra you cannot sell to DMB. Maybe you can sell to your neighbor, but you cannot sell to DMB. Okay? DMB only one way supply. So this one we call it self consumption. You generate more, you use more. You generate less, then you buy from DMB. But if you generate extra, you cannot sell back to DMB. Okay? So this uh, is our case of this. Lah. So uh, this one, lucky mark, I can say that. Okay? So now we can say that we left only two. Um, 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 plan, plan, one is a self consumption, one is a net energy metering 3.0. Net energy metering 3.0 state of OPA, so I think you don't need to go for this self consumption. Okay? Uh, this uh, last year solar tree. Okay, this one is open for tender as I explained to users now to increase the HC generation from renewable energy. So they will pick whichever is cheaper. Lah. Which able to produce uh, electrical uh, power at a cheaper cost. Okay, then um, we talk about a little bit about electricity generation in Malaysia. So this one you can see that capacity like Peninsula Malaysia we have this amount twenty two point nine thousand megawatt. In Sabah, Sarawak is slightly less, especially in Sabah. Okay, and then our peak demand is seventeen point seven eight eight. And then reserve margin is 29%. And Sarawak, you have margin of 36%. In other words, in one day, the maximum cap demand that we need is only 17,000. But we generate 22,000 average. Okay? So where is the energy goes? Are you able to store the energy? It's actually wasted. Okay? So we wasted 29% of energy every second every year. Okay, and Sarawak even worse. We wasted 26%. Reserve margin is needed for every country, every electricity generation. Because let's say I have 10 power plants, I do not know any of them may shut down in, at any time. So I need to have the margin. This is a reserve. So whenever I have uh, uncertainty, or unscheduled shutdown. So I think enough to power the industry and the commercial or maybe resident as well. Okay, but when this reserve margin is too high, then our electricity cost will be very expensive because it's wasted. This 29% is totally wasted. Just reserve for something else. Okay, so this means by reserve margin. And then you can see that Sarawak Remember, uh, this reserve money normally we are not able to store it. Uh, we have to let it go. We generate and base it. You have no way to store it. Maybe uh, the only thing you can store is maybe you store in your water in the bag. But how much you can store? If your dam already full, there's no place to store. You are not able to store in the battery. It's even more expensive. Okay? And then you can see Starbucks, Salawa. They even high reserve margin because the electrical supply in the yeah, Stage Sabah Sarawak is even not as uh, stable as Malaysia, the Peninsula Malaysia. So we need better reserve margin to cater for that. Okay, and then Sarawak thirty six percent yes, because we have too many dams in Sarawak. The power supply is much higher than the power demand in Sarawak. Okay, there's too many in river. Okay, let's look on this uh, install capacity mix in Peninsula Malaysia, Sarawak and Sabah. So you can see in Peninsula Malaysia, we uh, focus or we use the gas and coal more for the case, 49 and 39. And hydro, 11%, and renewable energy, 1%. This is Peninsula Malaysia. We still mainly powered by these two gas and uh, coal, Aramatu, nearly 90%. Okay, so 
but it's still a lot for room, a big room for improvement. And this is Tamawa. Selama gas, arang batu, sorry, arang batu and gas, only 23%, and most of them is hydro. As I said, they have a lot of river. And they have one bakun dam, which is able to generate, um, wait on, which is able to generate 22,000 megawatt in this ticket. Sorry, sorry, 2,300 megawatt capacity. So you, you already more than half of the Salawa. Okay, Bakun Dam is very, very big. Huh? But there's a big story over here lah, for Bakun Dam. So we call it as a white elephant project. Okay, okay then we have the Saba. The Saba mostly they use gas and diesel. You see, huh? in Peninsula Malaysia and Saba, we don't use diesel. But why Saba, Saba we use it? Because there's uh, so many rural areas which not able to have the good power transmission. So every village, every area, rural area have to generate their own power supply, which is very small scale. So this is the easiest one. Okay, the power plant can be very small. Okay, and then they use gas a lot as well. But now um, this um, coal because the transportation is a big problem. Okay, and they use uh, five percent of TBP lah. Uh, TBP stands for the Naga Ole Baharu, which is renewable energy. Okay. Okay, let's look on the energy consumption by sector in Malaysia, co comparing between 1996 to 2016 in this um, 20 years different. So you can see first the total. Total is from 23 kiloton of oil equivalent to 87. So more than double. In these 20 years, the energy consumption in Malaysia is more than double. Contributed by industry, commercial, whatever the population will increase so much. Okay, so you can see industry 40%, transportation, resident. Uh, this is a one part called non energy use. Huh? You can see you have non energy use over here 7.3%. This non energy use is mean that you use energy for the non energy uh, application. Huh. What's mean by non energy application? For example, um, petroleum is uh, energy. Maybe you can use the petroleum to do some rubicon oil or wax or maybe other product, petroleum based product. Okay, use energy to do non energy activity. We call non energy use. Okay, which contribute to 7.3%. And then this uh, year 2016, uh, you see comparison. Transportation become highest. I think everyone will feel it. The, the total number of cars on the road will be is much more compared to 1996. Okay. And then our industry lower. You can see that the portion for industry drop a lot because of this transportation grow to of energy consumption in building. Uh, this is not in Malaysia, huh? this is general. You can see that space heating, which is 45%. We look on the resi residential line, huh? 45%. Because uh, in general, uh, in Europe country or country we have a four system, normally they use a lot of space heating. Okay, and we Malaysia then we use space, space cooling. Huh? Okay, so if we can save on this, then definitely we can save more than 50% of the energy usage. Heating and cooling use a lot of energy. Okay, 45 plus active already. And then the rest, space cooling, lighting 6%, refrigeration 4%, electronic, your handphone, the dilution 5%, computer, wet cleaning, cooling, cooking. Okay, all use relax plus. Okay, so try to reduce this. That's why um, space heating in Euro country, they may not use the electricity to do the space heating. They can use the uh, hot water. Maybe uh, nearby they have the hot water supply or nearby they have the power plant, which this excessive heat is uh, wasted. So they can use for space heating. They save a lot of cost. By Malaysia, the heat from power plant is totally wasted. We have to release to the environment, release to the river. Because we use the river water to do the cooling, 
So the heat will be released to the water and environment. We are not able to use it because no one will use for space heating. We need school cooling only, not heating. But in the cold climate country, now, they are, they are, if, if the efficiency of the power plant can be increased by reducing the heat from the power plant. Okay. And this is the electricity production in Malaysia by fuel start overall. Okay. So you can see gas and oil. Uh, you can see in 1997, we used a lot of oil. And here, 2017, where is the oil? Oil, 0%, uh, drop to 0%. Uh. Can you imagine? From 29% to 0%. One thing is the oil price is not stable. Second thing is normally use oil when your power plant is not centralized. When we use a huge big scale power plant, we will not use oil because it's more expensive. That's why we have changed to gas and other. You can see how most of this uh, we use coal and gas nowadays, mostly uh, and hydro 606. Okay, this is for rural country, rural area. La. Okay, maybe it's, uh, transportation is not too good, so we are still use a diesel pump. La. Okay, so we can see that we rely on coal and gas greater than gas and oil. We have changed our uh, focus. La. Okay, these are the developing the potential of renewable energy comparing 2014 to 2020. So you can see that in year 2014, the total installed capacity only for that year, uh, it had a lot come from solar photovoltaics. Why? Because that year is year of the feed-in tariff. It's so attractive that all the company, all the resident, citizen go to apply for this. So they just spark in the increase in the capacity of solar photovoltaics, 66%. But in year 2020, now they do not have feed tariff, they have the um, net energy return. So end up with solar photovoltaics become very less. But biomass become very high because the quota for biomass still have it for feed tariff. As I say, feed tariff have the quota for uh, photovoltaics, for small hydro and for biomass. And this small hydro and biomass, the quota still left over the year 2020. But the photovoltaics, no more. That's why you can see the huge spark in the biomass, biogas, and small hydro. Okay, so everything is about the uh, return of investment. Now. Okay. And solid waste. Solid waste also considered as a biomass, huh? as mean that from the municipal solid waste, we burn it or landfill gas, we collect the gas and then to, uh, to run the power plant. Okay, all of these contribute by the feed tariff. And this is the expected growth of the usage of renewable energy. Now we are year 2021, we are here. Okay, so until year 2050. So you see that what SEDA actually estimated solar DV. So solid waste, not much increase, mini hydro. Not much increase, everything not much increase only target on solar PV. So the potential of solar PV in Malaysia is so huge. You can see that this um, setup only target on solar PV. The aspect that we grow almost 100% is contributed by solar PV. Okay. And now we have the safe program. Okay, this is the Safe program actually stands for sustainability achieved via energy efficiency. And remember, we have a few methods. One is to make the devices more efficient. One is use the renewable energy. And this safe program is to make the energy efficient, make the device more efficient. So how they achieve the result in domestic electricity consumption of 306.9 reduction gigawatt hour. Okay, saving of 78.4 million ringgit emission and greenhouse gas emission reduction of uh, 208,000 ton of CO2 equivalent. Okay, CO2 is a gas uh, and count in ton. Uh, so you imagine that how, how much is the amount. Okay, how they do it? They make a very simple sticker on that. Okay, uh, this one, uh, they have a label. 
I think you can see this in your air conditioning system or your refrigerator, or you can see this sticker, whether five or one. Five star is the best. Okay. I don't know whether we have one star or not, but here it states that uh, low, less, least energy efficient is state for two star and five star. Okay. This is a uh, safe program one. We don't have any more. Now we have safe program two, mm, which just started. Uh, that's maybe applicable for you. Maybe you have to look on it. A 200 ringgit of e rebate voucher. Sorry, e rebate program for household that purchase energy efficient air conditioning unit or refrigerator that has undergone a performance test for energy efficient applicants that receive a four or five star energy efficient. So if you buy a refrigerator or air conditioning with the sticker four or five star, you can claim for 200 cash rebate. Uh, when you start, the, the project implementation period has been set at one year from January 2021 to December 2021. So you still have six, year, six months to go like if you want to buy, to install air conditioning unit or refrigerator. But how to claim for it, I also don't know. You have to ask Seda. Okay, maybe they set a different uh, quota for it. Maybe claim for uh, maybe 100 unit, or maybe they set uh, something like um, uh, your, your group, your income grouping. Maybe just for M40 and below. Okay. So this increase, the objective for this stage 2.0 program is to increase the total number of five and four star energy efficient electrical appliance and energy efficient appliance in the market. So for air conditioning, without, um, without the inverter, I don't think you can get four or five star. Okay, normally the air conditioning with the inverter, you're only able to get four or five star. Okay, or else you will get maybe three star only for the normal air conditioning or even two star. Depend depends on the brand. Okay. Maybe Taiki will give you better rating. I don't know. Okay, okay maybe you can try at least 200 ringgit and maybe you can share with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then why is sustainable energy important? Environmental impact. We reduce the emission of greenhouse gas and mitigate the impact of global warming. Greenhouse gas here refer to the carbon dioxide. But keep in mind that Carbon dioxide is not the only greenhouse gas. We still have the methane gas. We still have the water vapor. Greenhouse gas, as long as it can hold the heat, we call it as a greenhouse gas. Okay, so which gas has the high heat capacity? It's already the greenhouse gas. Because it can hold a lot of energy. Okay, heat energy. So it will trap the heat. Okay, uh, carbon dioxide, la, methane gas, CH4. La, and then the water vapor uh, all able to absorb a lot of heat. Okay. Okay, uh, maybe I'll give you um, one scenario. We know that Malaysia is very hot. Okay, very wet and hot. Wet, uh, Malaysia is very high, wet and hot. And then at desert, maybe uh, Sahara desert, it's very dry and hot. So what's the difference dry and hot and wet and hot? Okay, we talk about Malaysia first. You can see in Malaysia in the daytime, we are very hot. At the night time, we still very hot. <laughs> you can feel that at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., of course, slightly lesser, not so hot, but still, you still can feel the heat from the surrounding because we have a lot of water vapor in the air. So it's able to hold the heat. So even until in the morning, yeah, you have humid or uh, water vapor. Yes, it make it very hot. Even until 2 or 3 a.m., you still can feel the heat. But how about in desert Sahara? In the daytime, very hot. At night time, very, very cold. Why? Because they do not have water to hold the heat. Okay, so to make it the temperature different between daytime and nighttime is so much different and make you not comfortable to, to, to stay. In Malaysia, yes, we're quite stable. Daytime and nighttime quite stable because we have a lot of water, very humid. Okay, so whether the greenhouse gas is a good gas or bad gas, it depends on you. Or we can say that we don't want too much, we also don't want too less. 
the green top gas. Okay, because it can help you to uh, hold the heat. So in the sound aspect, it's a good thing. Of course, we don't want too much. Lah. Okay, so don't have the very bad expression on this green top gas. It's not always the bad thing. Sometimes, sometimes it's a good thing. Like, so, so maybe we can talk about drug. Drug and painkiller actually is similar thing. Okay, you can use the drug to release the pain. But if you use too much, then it will be a bad thing. It will be a, a, a diesel or what? Edited. Okay? So everything has a good side and a bad side. Lah. Okay? Don't always say that green gas is very bad. Okay, secondly, is a sustainable de development to reduce the dependence on rapidly depleting fossil fuels. And then energy security to ensure the resilience of Malaysia energy supply by reducing dependence on the imported source of fuel. Okay, this might especially on fossil fuel stuff because yes, Malaysia has a lot of petroleum, but the petroleum um, jet from Malaysia is actually high quality, which is not used for power generation. We sell to other country and we buy from the other country, which have the natural gas and coal, which is cheaper to generate power. But the price is frustrating. We need to depend on the supply and demand worldwide. But if you use renewable energy, then you don't care about the price of the cost. So the cost of the fuels is totally free. We have the only maintenance. And maintenance is predictable. I know that the maintenance cost is like this. Every year will be the same. But the cost of energy, fossil fuels is not stable. They can be, today is 40 ringgit. Maybe next year can be 80 ringgit, double. Okay? That's why you want to maintain them. And in security, first we have to maintain the cost for electricity generation. Okay, the next one, economic development. Okay, that Malaysia terminals potential and develop of that competitive sustainable energy industry. They can earn money. How? Uh, yes, we have a lot of uh, company doing solar industry. After they provide service to the Malaysian, they can provide service to Singapore, to the Indonesia, or nearby country. So we earn money from other country if we have that kind of expertise. Okay, so it's kind of the economy development and it also will, will give a lot of the uh, job. Okay, you create a lot of job. Okay, um, maybe this question. Why most of the power plant convert other form? I think we don't need to take a break. Huh? We just continue until the end, then we can dismiss. Huh? Why most of the energy power plants convert other forms of energy to electrical energy? I'm just checking, are you listening to my lecture just now? Yeah, why we convert to electrical energy? You can answer in the chat box. If no response later, I will take a word and add it in. I'll create a poll and then ask you. Quality, yes. Ah, good quality, yes. Ah. Yes. Ah. More efficient to transfer, more efficient to convert, okay, and also more efficient to store. Okay, in general, we call it good quality, right? but in detail, we can talk about it's easy to transfer, efficient transfer, easy to convert, efficient to convert, and also store. Okay, so I think okay, the general word is quality. So does it mean that uh, students that learn ELE engineering is more quality? Uh, <laughs> okay, last slide. Why renewable energy is not widely used in Malaysia? What is your thought? You can see that in Malaysia, we just use about less than 20%. We still not hit our target and we keep extending the year to achieve our target. So why? Cost. Okay, maybe you can. High cost is not really a uh, reason because if you refer to the chart that now, just now, the solar cost is already cheaper than the fossil fuel power. Okay, low awareness. Yes, this one I totally agree. Awareness. We do not have the awareness to do that. What else? Okay, uh, cost is uh, very subjective, uh, as I say, it totally depends on the location 
and depends on the compared to different type of um, fossil fuels or different type of renewable energy. So do not use the cost as a point unless you really know no idea at all. Okay, like you see, low awareness. Okay, very good. Lack of expertise. expertise. Okay, accepted. Lack of technology. Okay, accepted. Possible. All is a possible reason. We do not have much expertise. We do not have the good technology to develop a very good uh, renewable energy power plant. Um, power generation is not consistent. I don't think it's correct. Right? Malaysia. I think Malaysia power generation is quite good compared to the Southeast Asia, other, other country in Southeast Asia. You can look on our research market, have 30% of research market. So our power generation is very consistent. No wind. Uh, uh, that means this is only applicable for the wind industry. Like. Okay, maybe you can say that uh, we have not much resources, only solar, the rest are not so favorable. Okay. How about government? Does government play any role in this? Yes, I think you can blame the government as well. Maybe uh, the policy is not attractive enough. Maybe government not put enough uh, money or what into the system, to the policy, to the target. Okay? Our policy and target not active enough, not strong enough. Maybe the government not really force us to use renewable energy. Okay? And this another thing is Malaysia is the petroleum producer country. So when you have a very cheap petroleum, why I want to build, uh, invest or develop renewable energy? Because I have better alternate resources. Okay, so this is also one of the reasons why we do not target money. But for example, if your country do not have the petroleum and you buy petroleum, it's very expensive. Of course, we have to pay more attention on the development of the renewable energy. Okay, because you don't have other choice. But in Malaysia, we have more better choice than renewable energy. Okay, this, I mean that this kind of question is very subjective. You can talk about a lot of things. High initial cost, uh, Yao Ting, high initial cost is not applicable for all renewable energy, but maybe you can target on the hydropower. Okay? I think all of you can answer this kind of question. Huh? But cost, let's put at, at, at the last one, last, last point. And then uh, number two, target assist for renewable energy to create, generate 20% of electricity by 2025, four years from now. Can this be achieved? But do you think four years? Now, maybe now due to the full MCO, and then uh, I think our economy is badly hit by this COVID 19 pandemic. So maybe you extend a bit up, up to you. But it's up to you in, to explain whether you can achieve this or not. If you can say yes, then explain why, how you can achieve. If you know, then explain why not. Hmm. If you can say yes, then what part of the renewable energy will deliver this target? Mm. I think uh, Stella already tell you already, according to the graph. Okay, it already tell you that which renewable energy able to achieve the target. Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, Zhongyi, you very clear about RRS project. Very good. Many RRS projects ongoing. So when they completely, when when the project complete, then we already can achieve it, okay. Uh, maybe uh, Zhongyi is from the solar industry, possible. Maybe his father own, own the uh, solar farm, or solar company, <laughs> or maybe trading in this kind of solar company, okay. Inside the, um, okay, any question until here? Hmm. This, uh, we have complete the uh, chapter for this in function to renewable energy. Maybe we can have a look on the video before we dismiss. Mm, maybe this. 
minute ha, two minute ayah have you have anything on okay give me some time is a huge part of our daily life. We eat with energy. We travel with energy. We work with energy. And we even flirt with energy. But where does all of this energy come from? Today we gather most of our energy from coal, oil and natural gas, also known as fossil fuels. Additionally, we gather energy from biomass, nuclear and renewables. Fossil fuels consist of extracted decomposed organisms and plants that existed millions of years ago. Biomass converts plants into biometric material to produce energy. Nuclear energy is released. Lastly, renewable energy comes from a source that's not depleted when used, such as wind or solar power. But what's the profound difference between them? How they affect our planet? Fossil fuels cost more than what we pay at the pump and impacts our environment in many ways. These impacts include global warming, air quality deterioration, oil spills, and acid rain. It's also projected that fossil fuel resources will be depleted within the next 50 to 100 years. Biomass and nuclear energy also have similar issues. We need a solution relatively fast and luckily, we have one. Renewable energy comes from resources which naturally replenish in our lifetime, whereas fossil fuels are a one-time use resource in the human time scale. Resources for renewable energy include sunlight, wind, rain, tides, waves, and geothermal heat. The best part is that we don't need to compromise our planet to harness it, nor do we have to rely on other nations for these resources which history has shown to be a contributor to war, famine and political instability. So, how do we get this to look like this? Presently we have the technology to be 100% renewable reliant. The truth is our infrastructure is built around our fossil fuel dependency. If we could convert our infrastructure to what's known as a super grid, we would be able to rely on clean renewable energy. So, what's it going to be? Will our children live in a... Is it the solution project? That's all. Okay, I think this is all for the interruption. So you can see that uh, renewable energy is not reliable. Okay, and so what the video explained is you can combine all the type of renewable energy into one uh, mega scale project. So whenever you do not have solar energy, you still have wind energy. When you have no wind energy, you still have hydro energy. So you combine all together, you become a smart grid. So you become very powerful and able to power the entire nation or entire earth. Something like this, the idea is that. Okay, but how difficult to achieve this, I also don't know. Okay. So um, next week, we will start on the solar chapter. Lah. We will go into the largest chapter for these uh, courses, solar. And for actually, we will bring to the back. Okay, because it involves a lot of calculations. So I think it would be better to teach you at the end of the semester. So when I examine you, then I think it's easier for you to remember. Lah. Okay. So any other question before we dismiss? 
Now, uh, again, long, nuclear is not a uh, renewable energy because uh, nuclear fusion is not able to regenerate. Okay? So we're not considered as a renewable energy, but it's totally clean. Mm. But safety is an issue. Right? It's clean, but safety is an issue. Okay, any other questions? Mm. Okay, nah. if uh, there's no more question, then we can dismiss now. Okay, thank you for your attention and see you next week. And yeah, for RED, the tutorial program will start it will start from next week. Huh? Okay, so this week you we don't have tutorial class yet. We start from next week. Okay, bye bye everyone and see you next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, sir.